What's up everyone on YouTube, this is Chris. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're talking about three stocks that I am buying right now, and they all happen to be SPACs, otherwise known as special purpose acquisition companies. But with these, I believe they are undervalued and overlooked names that you should be thinking about investing in right now. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. We talk all about investing the right way, doing our due diligence, fundamental and technical analysis. And these videos are jam packed with research for you guys so that you know these are quality stocks. The first stock we're talking about here is one that I've talked about on the channel in the past, and that is GIK, otherwise known as Gig Capital 3, which is going to merge with the EV company Lightning E Motors. Now, this is a company that has a valuation put on in about $750 million uh, at $10 per share. Right now, the price is around $15. So you're really paying for about a $1 billion company here. And yes, I believe this is very undervalued for an EV company, especially one with fundamentals like this. With Lightning E Motors, they have a 50% plus market share in the class of vehicles that they specialize in. Now, these types of vehicles are low volume, meaning that they don't sell, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of them, and they don't plan to do that, but they sell a uh, very custom made high price point vehicles to a lot of name brand companies, a lot of business to business partnerships that they have are really great. And they have Amazon, they have ABC companies, they have DHL, a lot of companies that are going to need these you know class three to class seven type of vehicles you know kind of like mid range uh vehicles that are you know pretty much like vans like delivery sort of uh vehicles that are vital to a lot of uh industries that we know right shipping especially with that amount of market share and that uh leadership i think it definitely warrants a much higher stock price and looking at their projections in terms of revenue Right, a very key point in fundamental analysis, you have a company that is already generating revenue. And a lot of these EV companies, especially the early stage ones, don't have any revenue at all right now. We're expecting about 60 million plus in revenue this year. They have the purchase orders or contracts in place for the you know 2021 and 2022 expectations. Just last month, they got a really big purchase order as well, another new one. And through 2025, that revenue is going to grow about 200% compounded year over year. And that is really, really huge, right? For a $1 billion valuation, basically, thereabouts right now, you're getting a company that will do $2 billion in revenue in a few years. That type of value is extraordinary in this space. And even just considering the revenue that they're probably going to get this year, around 60 million that's pretty conservative They're only paying a price to sales ratio or price to sales multiple of about 15 right now for this company and 15 ps for you know 200 percent growth plus let me tell you is really really inexpensive it's dirt cheap okay for this type of growth stock so the valuation has a lot going for it especially when you compare it to this chart right here that i should have on the screen comparing it to other EV related companies in this space, the valuation is a lot lower than its peers. And speaking of those peers again, because those peers, most of them are competing in a much more competitive space as far as the class of vehicles that they're in, most of the EV companies are in passenger type of vehicles. They're not directly competing with those guys. So it's uh, a lot better for them uh, in terms of being able to maintain their leadership in the certain vehicles that they're in uh, competing in right now they have a good potential of getting more government contracts in my opinion as the administration has suggested that they will replace all types of government federal government vehicles with evs so that is definitely a very positive thing and over the next year or so they are also going to cut their cost of goods down by around 50 percent so the profitability of this business is only going to get much, much better. And besides those vehicles, they do have battery as a service. They have financing as a service. They have their, you know, their business model is interesting because they have developed their own technology. They're working on their own technology and uh, their own vehicles. But of course, they also partner with some other traditional OEMs 
to do business with them. And I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people want their EV company to, you know, make everything themselves, you know, everything original parts, etc. But I think that there is a lot of merit to working with the likes of Ford, the likes of GM. With GIK, I own about 600 shares right now, cost basis in the 14s. And I think that this can definitely reach a minimum of 20 to 25 in the future. So I'm definitely holding until it realizes that potential. Moving on to the next stock here is BTNB, otherwise known as Bridgetown 2. Okay, so I had some pretty good success with the first iteration of this SPAC, right? BTWN or Bridgetown, you know, one or the original, right? Which is trading around $16 and BTNB right here is trading around $13. And for those of you guys who are not aware, BTNB is a SPAC created by Peter Thiel's investment fund and peter thiel is a you know a very famous guy very influential tech entrepreneur he co-founded paypal he co-founded pounds here he's invested in a ton of top name uh technology companies one of the first investors in facebook and made it you know a fortune doing that right so he's a guy who really knows his business he knows his stuff and this spec specifically is targeting Companies, you know, in you know, a couple billion dollar range in Southeast Asia or Hong Kong, you know, those type of growing developing markets where there is a lot of companies, there are a lot of companies that are underinvested, but with a high amount of growth, right? And you know, knowing me, right, the biggest stock in my portfolio is SE or C Limited, and this is the premier Southeast Asia e-commerce gaming payments company. All those type of industries are growing a lot right now in Southeast Asia. You know, e-commerce alone is growing at 200 plus percent, you know, every couple of years. So this is definitely a region with a lot of growth. And I think that this is one of the only SPACs that is targeting that region. I'm okay with holding this SPAC until they get closer to finding a candidate. You know, I think that it's still relatively undiscovered you know a lot a lot of people are talking about this you can see at least a 10 20 percent type of upside for this back and you know if they do find a really good company to partner with you could see a lot more upside than that right so the risk reward here is definitely in your favor i have a small position in btnb about 150 shares i will continue to add more to this company if the stock stays around 13 or even below that number. And the third SPAC or stock that I'm buying right now is Fuse, okay, F-U-S-E. And Fuse recently just reported that they are going to bring a company called Money Lion onto the stock market. Now, Money Lion is a very interesting company here. It is sort of like a bit like SoFi where they have one company, but with multiple products and they are imputing around a $2.8 billion valuation. They have a well-established app, you know, tens of thousands of reviews on that one. They have instant cash advances. They have credit building products, uh, super low APR type of loans that are really designed to help people grow their credit. And they're really overall targeting, you know, the middle class here. And they're also adding cryptocurrency exchange throughout the app in the near term future. So this is a company that is in a certainly hot space in financial technology. Despite that, however, there's not a lot of hype going into this company. I'm not sure actually why. If you look at their comparison chart to the valuations of other companies in this space, they rank among some of the lowest at this valuation right now and at 11, $12 per share. Over the past year, as far as fundamentals go, they did about 200% increase in revenue which is astronomical, right? Over the next few years, they are expecting around 77% growth to continue, which is again, very, very high. I love that type of high growth in a good company. And that is generally where you find a lot of upside, a lot of potential for your stocks to 2X or 3X or 4X. And their 1.4 million customers they have right now are probably gonna go into the several uh, multi-millions as far as customer base. And each of those customers, as they get more products in this platform on Moneyline, they are going to be able to generate more revenue per customer. 
So there's a lot to like about this company. I have about 300 shares here in my account and I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to add more if there is a dip or continues to show weakness here. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video. Make sure to like and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you are invested in any of these companies. I'd love to hear all of your opinions. And until next time, stay well, my friends, and invest responsibly.